I'm going to run through how I wired my auxiliary lights and GPS to my dash switches that I added to my 2018 Africa Twin Adventure Sport. I have the battery depicted here with a picture. I've got a relay for when the ignition turns on and off. I can um, only have these switches active then so I don't kill my battery and I'm powering that relay using the auxiliary power outlet on the front of the dash that came factory from Honda. And what I've done is I've done two switches, one for my aux lights and one for the GPS power. So um, where I'm putting these are on the left side, there are two blank offs, one for the aux switch and then the second one is for the GPS power. And the reason I wanted to power my GPS on and off is that when I'm in town, I don't like cycling that on and off. It's 13 years old now. But when I'm in town, I don't need to have that GPS turning on and off all the time. So I want to just have a hard power switch um, before I used to have to pull up fuse from my V-Strom. So the way this thing's going to work is the I spliced into this hot wire on the back side of the power outlet on the dash uh, right next to this. And I took that positive signal here with the ignition on. What that'll do is it will activate the relay. So on this relay, you look at it, there's the posts here, 85 and 86. So you connect that 12 volt. When I activate that with the key, it'll run through ground and activate that solenoid. And what that's doing is it's actually connecting the switch to the battery from the battery power. So I have direct battery power going into one side of the relay. And when that uh, little solenoid activates when I connect through 85 and 86 that solenoid that switch comes across and connects it so then I have power to my two switches that is on the power side each of these switches on the top side is where the power is here and then what that tells you that this is the load in the middle of these switches and then on the right is the ground so now the switches are powered this is what they look like in the bike. Um, I've got Graham again, just as review. And then without all the overlay pictures, this is a detail of the wiring diagram itself, the circuit diagram. And uh, I actually used a different relay than what is pictured here. I got some waterproof relays off Amazon. They actually came with uh, wire leads coming off of that. And again, this uh, battery depicted here was my V-Strom battery. I actually have that run. And then the rest of the video, you'll see how I ran that down to the battery on the uh, Africa Twin. These are the lights that I got off Amazon. I had a buddy who had these, and they are very bright when I uh, am leading in front of him. They have had some reliability slash durability issues. He's had them replaced from the manufacturer, the guy that sold them to us. And I'm hoping that that won't happen to me. Not sure what the issues are there. This is my Zumo 550. It has had its share of durability issues as well. I bought it at garage sale and the screen started flipping out and locking up. So I ended up swapping it for the screen on my 450 that was even older. And now I have one GPS that works until I, uh, this one fails. Then I'll move on and have to buy a new upgraded modern one. One limitation on this 550 is I have had trouble trying to load the GPX or tracks to it and it's got very limited memory. So Garmin does offer a loyalty program where they'll give you 30% discount off a new one. So maybe I'll use that. Here are the blanks on the left side of the instrument panel that I'm going to be putting my waterproof power switches that I got from Amazon. I got a pack of five for about $8 I think. And I did have to modify these and cut them down on top and the bottom because the angle of the dash didn't let them go all the way in and flat with the size that they were. So I had to grind them down and I was able to get them to basically latch on the back side. My 12 volt auxiliary power outlet, I rotated it 90 degrees, the plastic cover, because when I was trying to plug in there, I was having trouble with my extended USB adapter was not working. So... If you don't have any more interest in the gory details of how I wired this all together, you can end the video now. Thanks for watching and good luck with your install. If you want to see all the gory detail, I'm going to continue and go step by step with all the connections and some of the putting it back together in the final test. So the other thing you could do is increase the speed and it'll go by a little bit faster until you get to the end and maybe there's some stuff there you want to see.
Thanks for watching. A little spoiler alert here. When you take this out, this little gray piece, what it is, is it's a little, I don't know what they call it, a wing key or something, but what you do is you rotate it 90 degrees this way and then it falls right out. Before you do that, ask me how I know, you should tape and cover this cavity here because when you pull it off, it will fall down in this hole. I was lucky enough that it got stuck. It will fall down that cavity. It got stuck and I was able to get a wire and hook and fish it out. So, um, again, I had not seen one of these before. But this little gray piece, what you do is I wrote from this position, it's here. You would rotate it counterclockwise, a quarter of a turn, and then it'll just fall right out. Um, but again, before you do that, cover this cavity here because that little piece, when it falls down, will fall in here and it'll get buried. And I don't know how much work it would be to get it out of there. So when you take these side covers off, it was all very straightforward. Uh, the top clips up here they came off okay the one that I struggled with was um, right here in the middle these rectangular slots that you see right down the middle of the screen those take the tabs from the fairing and behind I could not see how to disengage the tabs that with the ridges here that are engaging I couldn't figure out how to get those to release so the challenge comes when those holes in the, that stay on the bike, they clip into these ridges on this. And what's very counterintuitive is that you need to pull this, and it's almost impossible to do, you almost have to pull this out in order to get these ridges here to release. And those ridges are what really held it firm in there. So I don't want to shave them down because then I don't feel like there'll be enough retention but all these other push pins, they came out really straightforward and were easy um, to get this thing off. But the, um, the last one, the hardest one, are these things right here. These I fought with for probably about 20 minutes before I figured out how to get those things to release. And um, I'm not sure I know the technique yet to do that. Just as a reference, um, you can see I have my turn signal off here. But the air boxes, the air filters are under this box right here. And I've seen the video of guys that are taking these off. What you do there is you take these screws off and you'll slide this box backward and then out and that will remove it. Um, and then you can put your new air filters in there. And these snorkels here, they just come up to the front. That's where you're getting your air from right here is the, the snorkel for the air box. So um, anyway, um, that'll be a different video when I hopefully uh, 15,000 miles from now, I'll have to change the air filters. For my power switches, I've bought these right angle quarter inch connectors. And these will get pushed on here and I've got to decide which direction I'm going to do them because when you put this switch back on and getting this whole thing apart is a little bit of a puzzle in itself. When you put this back on, there's not a whole lot of room. So what I had to do so I'm going to have to choose the path that the wires are going to go, one side or the other. Um, for the uh, One will be for the auxiliaries, one, the other switch will be for the GPS power. Again, both very low power and I'll be able to toggle those on and off here positively with gloves on. These LED headlights off of uh, Amazon for about 27 bucks. They have a really nice, um, I think it looks nice, rugged housing and it's got kind of this bug eye lamp to it and it's an LED light. A buddy of mine had these. He said good luck with one side, the other side keeps failing. I'm not sure if he's got issues with vibration but um, the guy that sells these, he was able to replace those a couple times for him so far. So I'm hoping I have better luck but because of that I'm going to be using bullet connectors to connect these. I've got my um, Honda light bar removed because I'm going to be putting on the heads in a different video and uh, these will mount to that right to, to the new heat bar or I may need some adapter for that. These LED lights are really low power. Uh, 10 watts at 12 volts would be um, only one amp. So uh, when you wire this, you don't need a whole lot of amperage. And so that's why for the two circuits that I'm running, 
These, um, you can see, these are like 18 gauge wires. I'll be putting bullet connectors on these uh, just in case they fail early. And I can then pull them off without having to redo all the wiring if I need to replace them with something different. Stay tuned. I had to break this up into three parts. Part two is coming next. Thanks.